Hey y'all, my name is Patrick Lyons and I'm here with Major Fitness. Today we're gonna to be assembling the LS1 leg press and hack squat machine. This is gonna be one of the coolest leg machines I've ever seen, specifically because it's two in one. Usually the leg press and hack squat are two totally separate machines, but today with this machine, they're all in one. So let's get to assembling and you can get up and running. Behind and all around me, you'll see all the components you need for your leg press and hack squat machine combo. And the way that we have this organized is basically we have the first step on this side and then all the way around me through to the very end, we have the final step. So basically going all the way from the bars, support beams, that sort of thing, to the pads that we will install at the very end. I recommend in your own home gym setup that you do the exact same thing, portion out the individual steps, that way you can keep everything organized to make the process that much simpler. All right, let's begin assembling your leg press and hack squat machine. I have two friends behind me who will be helping to assemble today. And note that all the things that you need to assemble your device are included in your package. But if you have any power tools and you like to use those, you're more than welcome to. So let's begin with the first step. So in your guide, you'll see the instructions for the first step. And basically you're going to want to take all five of the beam supports that are going to go on the base of your uh, machine. And of course, you're gonna grab your bolts, your washers, and your nuts, and bring them into whatever area you're going to be assembling this in, in your own home gym. So what we're doing here is basically pulling together all five of the feet that make up the base of the device. And of course, you're also going to want to grab the nuts, the bolts, and the washers, which are the metal components that are going to hold this structure together. Something to note is that as they're assembling this, they're going to be tightening things to a finger tightness level, basically meaning that they're just gonna be using maybe their fingers to get to the initial point of tightness and then later in the process is when they'll tighten all the bolts fully to uh, completion. And this is to allow the machine to have enough kind of leeway that all the parts can fit together and then at the very end you can tighten them all so you have that greater level of uh, structural stability. So here we're going through the first step assembly process and a couple things to note is that on your step one page you'll notice that it has part types one, three, five, and six listed at the top. So those are going to be your bolts, your gaskets, your lock nuts. Those are the sorts of things that we need to actually fasten this whole thing together. And then the larger components are labeled by letters. So the first part of the base is going to be parts C, B, and K. Um, and you can reference the earlier page in your guide for the parts list. That's where you can find part C, B, and K. And with those, one important thing to note is that part K is one that has some cylinders, metal cylinders on the top face. And you want to make sure that those metal cylinders are facing toward the front, or another way to think of it is they are on the far side compared to the back end of the machine. So the larger components that make up the base are parts C, B, and K for the first part of step one. And something to note that's very important is that part K is this crossbar here. And you wanna make sure that the metal cylinders are facing toward the front end of the machine. Or another way to think of it is they're on the far end compared to the back side. So just make sure you have the orientation of that correct. And then beyond those first three lettered components, we have also parts A and J. Those are the parts that are being assembled now at the front side of the overall base. And again, those uh, fastening components are part types one, three, five, and six. One and three are gonna be your bolts, five and six are your gaskets and lock nuts. And these are the components that basically you'll put a gasket onto the bolt, and then you'll slide it through any of the holes that you need to slide it through, and then a gasket and a lock nut will go on after that. And these components you can pretty much fasten with your hands to get to a point of finger level of tightness. And then only at the very end of the full assembly process is when you will completely tighten them um, with either a wrench or a power tool if you're using that um, to get it to the most structurally sound. All right, and this concludes all of step one. Let's begin assembling step two. So now that we have step one complete, we're going to be putting on the rear riser assembly. So basically it's going to be two large pillars that go on the right and left side. Of course, you wanna make sure that the curved part is angling toward the front of 
the machine. Another way to think of that is they're curved away from the backside of the machine. And again, you're gonna be able to see exactly what bolts, gaskets, and lock nuts you need at the top. So uh, basically you need four of the hexagon bolts, eight gaskets, and four lock nuts. That's all you're going to need to assemble the rear assembly. One thing you'll notice is that for the assembly process, you're gonna to need to lift up the base just a couple of inches off the ground. And this is where you're going to basically put on bolt with a washer from the underside. And then on top of that later is when we're gonna use the other washers and gaskets. But again, you're just gonna to need to lift it a couple of inches off the ground. And that's what's going to allow you to get the bolt through cleared to the other end of the hole. And then basically once those are in place, you're now in a position in which you can load the rear riser assembly on either side, like so. And you'll see that the bolt is able to kind of clear all the way up through the hole. And that is when the washer and the lock nut will be able to go on top of it. And again, same concept, you're going to just uh, go to finger level of tightness with these. And what that means is that it's totally okay if the rear riser assembly is wobbling a little bit because it's not fully tightened yet, that's gonna happen at the end of the process. So just get them to that point of finger tightness and then you should be good to go with the rear riser assembly. And this concludes the end of step two. Let's begin step three. So this is going to involve the assembly of the main beam pipe group. So something to note here is that each of the very long, the longest parts in the entire assembly have a handlebar at the end of those those handlebars are going to go at the bottom end of the assembly as opposed to the top. When you assemble this, you're going to want to again load bolts up from the bottom. So you're basically gonna preload a washer on there, lift up the frame just a couple of inches off the ground, load those bolts in through the bottom so that they're sticking up through the top. This is gonna make the assembly process much easier later on when you are putting that main beam pipe assembly in place. For the fasteners for this step, you're basically going to need four of part type three, which are the bolts. So four bolts, eight gaskets, and four lock nuts. So basically at the front end of the assembly, they've just put in four bolts, each with a washer a piece on the underside. And then part one of the main beam pipe assembly is being put on. And the key thing to note here is really just that the major fitness logo goes on the outside of each of those. So that can help orientate you on where you should be uh, positioning it on the overall machine. Once you have that main beam pipe assembly in place, that is the point in which you will put a gasket on top of or over the bolt that's already in place and then finger tighten the uh, lock nuts on top of that. As always, only need to go to finger level of tightness for now. Later in the process is when we'll fully tighten everything once the assembly is uh, much closer to completion. The purpose of the main beam pipe assembly is of course to offer overall structural stability to the device, but you can also see that the leg press hack squat machine is starting to really take shape. This is what enables, you know, the, uh, the movement of the plate for a leg press, as well as the up and down movement of your body in something like a hack squat. So you can really see the shape is starting to take place. So here they're assembling the main beam pipe assembly to the overall structure that is in place now. Specifically, um, the main beam pipe assembly is being placed onto the bolts that were loaded in from the bottom. And then on top of those bolts, you're putting a gasket and a lock nut. That is what allows you to secure that main beam pipe assembly part to the overall frame. And you'll just want to finger tighten this, getting it to the point where your fingers can get it to. And uh, it's totally okay if it's a little bit wobbly still, because it's only meant to be finger tightened until the very end when we fully tighten all the parts. So here what we're doing is tightening the bolts ever so slightly on the bottommost part of the machine. And the reason for this is we wanted to have enough structural stability that it can safely hold the, uh, the major beams in place. And so you still don't have to necessarily go all the way to complete tightness, but at the very least you wanna tighten them a bit. And to do so, as always, you'll want to stick a wrench in the bottommost part to uh, make contact with the bolt's head. That is what is going to allow you to tighten the lock nut on top, whether you're using a power tool or a wrench. And that concludes the end of step three. Let's move on to step four. So step four is going to involve the assembly of the connection plates to the major beams that we just installed. And the thing that's important to note here is that you don't have the beams flush with each other. You're actually going to line up these backmost rear beams with the second hole of the major beams. 
and that is how you're going to then connect the support plates or the connection plates to that. So part AC, those are the connection plates. You're gonna have four of those, two for each side, and those connection plates are going to be attached to the machine with four bolts, eight gaskets, and four lock nuts. So basically you'll want to push the beams to a spot where, again, the beam is uh, in line with the second hole, not the first, and that is the point in which you will put the connection plate onto it. So at this point in the process, basically you are attaching the connection plate to the rest of the structure. Notice that the beam is perpendicular to or intersecting with the second hole of the, uh, the major beam here, not the first, pushing it far enough forward that it's making contact with the second hole. And then at that point, that is when you can start to attach the connection plate to the rest of the structure. Basically you will feed in a bolt again with a preloaded washer and then on the other side that's where you'll load the second washer and your lock nut and as always you'll just finger tighten that so you can get it to the point of finger tightness without tightening it all the way all right and this concludes step four Let's move on to step five. Step five is going to involve assembling the crossbars to the rest of the frame. So up to this point, we've kind of got the basic shape of the leg press and hack spot machine put together. And now we have these crossbars, parts H and I in your guide. They were going to assemble between the two major beams. You'll basically want to grab exactly what it lists at the top of step five. So you got eight of the bolts, 16 gaskets and eight lock nuts. So basically half of those are gonna be used for each side of the machine. So basically that'll be four bolts on the right side, four bolts on the left, and then uh, eight gaskets and four lock nuts on each side as well. And so just as shown here, part H is the one with the very large holes and notice that the holes are facing up. So just make sure that those are facing up as opposed to down. And that part H is going to be assembled to the rest of the machine using the bolts, gaskets, and lock nuts that I mentioned. So as always, you're gonna to wanna to preload a washer onto the bolt, slide those into place, and then once they are all the way through and have cleared the hole on both sides, that is when you're going to put the additional washer and the lock nut on the other side to lock it in place. And you're just gonna to wanna to finger tighten that so that basically you uh, get to a point of finger tightness. And again, at the very end of the process is when we will tighten everything completely. In terms of the specific positioning of parts H and I, basically, H is going to go just above the handlebar. So notice that that is where it is positioned, just immediately above the handlebar. And then part I is going to go just below that, pretty much right in line with the handlebars. Part H is the guide rod fixed pipe group two, which basically just means that uh, the guide rods are going to go through that, which is why there is a very, very large hole there. And part I that goes beneath that is known as the seat cushion tube group. So um, it's going to enable the uh, positioning of the seat cushion. And that concludes step five. So step six involves the affixing of the armrest sleeve. So here we are attaching the armrest fixing sleeve set. So there's one on the right side and one on the left and this is going to enable the attaching of other components later in the process. Let's begin step seven. Step seven is going to involve attaching the armrest tube group, which you can also think of as the safety bars. When you're performing exercises on this, even if you're completely alone, it's totally safe to use because of these safety bars. They make it so that if you get stuck at some point during the exercise, you basically have a, a safe way out. That's a very exciting part of this overall structure. And uh, in addition to those armrest tube groups, we're also going to be attaching more of the armrest uh, sleeves. And those are going to go further toward the bottom of the device as opposed to up top where we affix the first cup. As with all the parts on this device, these are going to be affixed using the bolts, gaskets, and nuts. So you can see the counts of those that you need at the top of your guys. So you're gonna need four bolts, eight gaskets, and four lock nuts for this step of the process. Something to note is that for part T, which is going to be the armrest uh, support, you 
are going to have pre-locked screws. So there are screws that are pre-locked into place for that. So with the armrest tube groups, you're going to have a pre-locked screw and that is located at the bottom of the component. And you're going to need to uh, basically detach that before you can connect it to the rest of the device. And to detach that, you're going to need to use an Allen wrench. If you're looking at the device face on, you're going to want part V on the right, part U on the left. So be sure to be mindful of the labels on those parts. These are gonna be your armrest support sleeves, similar to the sleeves that we had up top. And these are just going toward the bottom of the device. And so you'll attach those first, and then we'll get to the actual armrest tubes that are the safety bars of the machine. So the safety bars or the armrest tube group, whatever you like to call it, once you slide that part, part T into place, then you can take your Allen wrench and basically detach the pre-locked screws that are mentioned at the top of step seven. And then once you have detached those screws, you can fully attach this component to the rest of the device via parts V and U. For this portion of step seven, you need to apply quite a bit of pressure. Basically, there is a spring at the bottom of this tube and you'll have to apply enough pressure to compress that spring a bit so that you can get the pin into place. That pin you're going to load in with an Allen wrench. Um, but yeah, you'll have to apply quite a bit of pressure. So if you have a friend around who can help, that might be helpful. And then once you've loaded in the pin on one side, you'll just want to load in the pin on the other side with the same process. And again, it's going to require quite a bit of pressure. Just expect that and uh, we'll get through it. And this concludes step seven. All right, let's move on to step eight. So step eight is going to involve a bit of a sub-assembly that gets attached to the rest of the assembly. So you're going to assemble the frame piece as well as the guide rods. And then you're going to also need part A, B, which you can again reference your parts list to find out what that is, which is the load bearing pipe. So the frame, the guide rods and the load bearing pipe. So as I mentioned, there is this sub-assembly that is being put together, which is where you're attaching the guide rods to the frame piece. And then to that sub-assembly, you're also going to attach the aforementioned load-bearing pipe, part AB. All right, so you're going to place the guide rods into the large holes on the frame that you've already installed. And notice the donuts, those go at the bottom and you can differentiate which side you want of the guide rods because the guide rods have a hole at the top. And then you're going to take the frame and attach that to the guide rods. This is specifically the sliding frame group in your manual. And that sliding frame group will slide over the guide rods. And note the orientation on this. The cylinders are at the bottom and the beams sticking out at the top are at the top. And that concludes step eight. Let's move on to steps nine and 10. Step nine is going to involve attaching the crossbar to the guide poles. And the thing that's important to note is that you're going to need to unscrew the nuts and washers because that is how you're going to attach the crossbar to the rest of the assembly. The other thing to note is that you want the guide poles to have the hole facing down, not facing up. That's what's going to allow you to attach the crossbar to the guide poles. As always, you can see at the top of step nine where and how many uh, bolts, gaskets, and lock nuts you need. So for this first step, part step nine out of the steps nine and 10, you need four bolts, eight gaskets, and four lock nuts. The reason we're lumping together steps nine and 10 is because 10 is basically just more gasket um, and bolt screwing. Another important thing to note is that the crossbar part G has preloaded or pre-locked screws. And so you'll need to remove those in order to allow it to make full contact with the screw hole of the guide poles. So just as a note, be sure that you unlock those screws and then you'll be able to fully assemble this part of the assembly. This step in the assembly process is a time when it's uh, pretty apparent why you want to keep the gasket screws and bolts loose because you do have to unscrew the screws in order to attach that crossbar. 
And so if they were fully tightened, it would just be that much harder to uh, make it work. So be sure again, throughout the entire process, keeping things just at that finger level of tightness. And then at the very end, you'll go back and tighten everything to completion. So that was the end of step nine, and we're going to proceed with step 10, which is just the fastening of bolts into place. For this step, you're going to use eight of the number seven type hexagon socket bolts. And you can see in the image in your guide exactly where those go, but it's basically two of the bolts in each section that they are being affixed to. And as always, just use a finger level of tightening. So just using your own hands to uh, tighten them into place. And that concludes steps nine and 10. Let's begin step 11. So step 11 is going to involve the assembly of the load bearing frame piece that's going to go kind of on the underside backside of the rest of the frame assembly. So that's part M in your guide. And part M, you're going to use three of the part four or type four hexagon bolts, six gaskets and three lock nuts. So again, you are assembling the load bearing frame to the backside underside of the rest of the frame assembly. With this one, you're going to want to preload the screws into place. With this one, you're going to want to preload the bolts into place with a uh, washer. So washer on the bolts and then load them in from the top side. And then a load bearing frame group you can attach in from the underside. And then to hold that in place, you can use a gasket and lock nut to secure it. So you want to load the load bearing frame from the underside, and then you can use a gasket and lock nut to secure that in place from the underside. And that concludes step 11. Time for step 12. Step 12 involves attachment of the load bearing pipe onto the part M frame assembly that we just attached from the backside. Thing that's important to note here is that there are pre-locked screws, washers, and nuts that are part of this assembly. And so you'll need to unscrew those and rescrew those to fully attach this component. One thing that's important to note here is that the load bearing pipe here at the back is part AB. Earlier in the guide, this rubber sleeve was labeled as part AB, but it should actually be part AK. So just make sure that when you're referencing your guide, they are using the images as well, because obviously that part AB would not fit in that position. So uh, there you have it. And that concludes step 12. Let's begin step 13. So step 13 is going to involve the use of the plate that your feet will go on for exercises on this device. It also has a handlebar on it, but do note that this is part N, not to be confused with the other plate. So part N is the actual plate, and then part P is the crossbar that goes across the plate. You're going to affix the crossbar to the plate using various bolts, sockets, gaskets, and lock nuts. So you can see at the top of step 13, you have your four bolts, two hexagon socket bolts. So you have two different types of bolts here, then 12 gaskets and six lock nuts. So just make sure that you're mindful of the types of bolts that you're using, since many of the steps only use one type of bolt. This one definitely does use two different types of bolts. So that's part types eight and nine. And this component, the sub assembly rather, is going to be assembled to the overall machine at the bottom part. So this would be if you were doing, say, a hack squat, your feet would go on this plate so that you could squat up and down on it. And once this is assembled, you're going to want to make sure that you are affixing it to the assembly with the uh, kind of rugged part on top. So the actual crossbar will be facing downward toward the floor as opposed to toward the ceiling. Once you have that sub assembly completed, you can reference the small zoomed in diagram at the bottom right of this page of your guide. And this is going to instruct you on exactly how to assemble the remaining components and fasteners uh, to basically attach this weight plate to the rest of the device. So you'll see that there's part types six, five, and nine that all come together for this. And then if you reference at the top, you can see that six, five, and nine basically is that that other type of socket bolt, as well as the gasket and lock nut. So that's the end of step 13. Something to make note of is that this plate for your feet is currently flat. Your image will show it at a bit of an angle. That's what it's going to get to by the end of step 14 that we're about to get to. Let's get to step 14. So step 14 is basically 
attaching a bar to the underside of the foot plate. And this is what's going to allow you to adjust the angle of that foot plate. This does have an adjustability to it. So effectively you can adjust exactly what angle this plate resides at. It doesn't have to be affixed to one specific angle forever. You can adjust it to your preferences as you're using it through different exercise variations. Something to note with this is that there are pre-locked screws, washers, and nuts that uh, come as part of this assembly. So you'll likely have to do some disassembly and reassembly to affix that bar to the foot plate. And that concludes step 14. Let's begin step 15. So step 15 is going to involve the back plate as well as the curved adjustment piece. So these parts are going to be assembled together into a sub assembly. So effectively you have the back plate in kind of an upside down position so that you can attach the curved adjustment plate to that. Note that the crossbar is curving away from the handlebar and that is going to be super important for when you assemble it to the rest of the device. So be sure to have that orientation correct. And then for the fastening components, we have four of the hexagon bolts, two of the hexagon socket bolts. So you're gonna have two different types of bolts on this one, gaskets and lock nuts. As always, be sure to preload your bolts, basically attaching a gasket to them before you install through the rest of the hole. And then a gasket and lock them is what will allow you to secure it in place on the other side. And once this piece is assembled, you can think of it as kind of the, uh, the partner that is going to be in parallel to the other plate. So we have this plate that is affixed already. And then the second plate is going to be affixed further up on the device. And the uh, curved adjustment piece will allow you to adjust the uh, angle of some things. With the curved adjustment piece attached, you also need to affix the uh, right and left sides of that plate to the rest of the assembly. So at that point, you will need to uh, fasten those a bit more tightly. To finish assembling this plate to the rest of the machine, you're going to need to use an Allen wrench so that you can fasten those screws with an Allen head onto the rest of the machine. And that concludes step 15. Let's move on to step 16. So step 16, all you have to do is load the bolt and spacer sleeve from the left side. And I say left, I mean, if you're facing the device, load it in from the left side. Again, all you need is a hex gun bolt and a spacer sleeve. Spacer sleeve will be flush with the uh, adjustable curved bar, and then the bolt will feed in right over that. And that concludes step 16. Let's begin step 17. Step 17, you're going to take the two bars with arms or handles attached to them, and those are going to be attached to the top piece. So this is the uh, part L that it's referring to. Part R is going to feed in on the top side, and part R are those two components that have the handles. Just make sure your orientation is right with these. Notice that the arm bar or uh, handle is curving to the outside, not to the inside and you're just going to attach that to the uh, rest of the assembly with some bolts, gaskets, and lock nuts. And that concludes step 17. Moving right along to step 18, this part is going to use part AH, which is one of the pads. So as a note, part AH is the smaller of the two cushions. This one is pretty much a perfectly rectangular shape with rounded edges. The other one is more of the uh, shape of a human with a head and a body. The cushion is going to be assembled to the rest of the assembly via the underside. So you're going to need to feed the bolts and gaskets in from the underside to attach the cushion to the rest of the assembly. That concludes step 18. Let's move right along to step 19. Step 19 is another very simple step. Basically, we're just assembling cushions to the underside of part R. And this is going to be the cushion that goes on top of your shoulders when you're doing a hack squat. To assemble these components, which I should note, the cushions are part AI, that is what they're listed in, as in your guide. And those parts are going to be assembled to part R, the metal component that's already in place, using four hexagon socket bolts and four of the flat gaskets. So as always, you can just basically preload those bolts to have a gasket attached to them and that way you can load them on that much more easily into the rest of the assembly. 
As a note, these are bolts that will require an Allen wrench, so that's how you will fasten these into place, using an Allen wrench. That concludes step 19. Let's move on to step 20. So step 20 is going to involve the affixing of the barbell to the rest of the assembly, and that is going to be part Y in your guide, and then you're going to use two of the collars, which are part AJ and that's how you're actually going to be able to attach the barbell to the rest of the assembly. You'll note in your guide that it also references part L, which as a reminder is that main frame that you've already attached here. And so that barbell is going to attach to the top portion of that assembly. Again, you're gonna be using parts Y and AJ, and then you're going to affix those components to the main frame using bolts, gaskets, and lock nuts. So for this part of the assembly process, you're basically attaching the barbell to the rest of the assembly. The barbell is going to attach to the top of basically parts R slash L. Remember parts R are the arms that are uh, able to be grabbed when you're doing a hack squat. And then part L is that sliding assembly. So you're attaching the barbell to the rest of the assembly via that. And you're also gonna be using two collars, which are parts A, J, that is how they are labeled. So for step 20, basically we are attaching the barbell to the rest of the assembly. So the barbell will attach to the top of part L, which as a reminder is that main frame, the sliding part of the assembly. And you're gonna be using the two collars to kind of cradle or hold the barbell in place. So the cradle is what actually allows you to attach the barbell to the rest of the assembly. And you're basically just feeding a screw through the hole that way. And that concludes step 20. Let's begin step 21. Step 21 is going to take four load-bearing tubes and you're going to attach those to the back end of the machine. And basically these are gonna stick out to the exterior of uh, the machine. And this is where you will be able to hold weights on the machine. So each of these has screws and flat washers pre-locked on the component. And so basically you'll want to remove those so that you can then re-fasten those onto the machine. And that concludes step 21. All right, let's begin step 22. Basically, it's a super simple step. You're just attaching the kick strap pipes to the side of the device using a loading pin. That concludes step 22. Let's move on to step 23. So step 23 and 24 are actually alternates of each other, which highlights the versatility of this machine. So here, we're moving the back plate into a flat position, and then when you attach the cushion, this is what enables you to fully go through hack squats. So that is basically the end of step 23, but it has a versatility component where you can then take this off and place it on the other plate. And this way, you can go into a leg press. When you do this, after you have attached that cushion to that surface, you'll then take the adjustable plate move that into your desired position to then go into a leg press. And that concludes the assembly of your leg press and hack squat. Some of the key features I wanna point out that I think are awesome about this. You have the adjustable cushions and foot plates, which basically allows you to do either a leg press in this setup or a hack squat in the other setup. It also has nylon roller bearings, which allows for a super smooth movement pattern. And it has wheels at the backside that makes this portable. It's a great all-in-one leg machine. One of the great parts of this machine is it has wheels at the back end that basically allow for portability. It has a great compact design, both of which make it awesome for home use.